What's the biggest argument you guys have gotten into? I don't think I'm gonna get in trouble telling you guys this, but. I was making $40,000 a year at a landscaping company. We made a viral video. We thought, okay, there was dude perfect. Now we're hanging it up. 60 million subscribers. When did life start changing? It had over a billion impressions in like a week. We had no intention of creating a brand, no intention of making a business or getting sponsored. What's the biggest partnership that you guys said no to? Yeah, Budweiser. We didn't really deliver on a video. So how does this work? Are you guys trying to create the next Disney World? We're still doing basketball trick shots 15 years later. We're not sitting here doing this interview. Yeah. You're very good at what you do. <laughs> Dudes, I'm so excited to be with you. I see Cody's yeah. not here, so this is the interview where we talk about why he's out of the group. We kicked yeah. him out. Yeah. Breaking yeah. news. This was uh, this we flew it. all the way, all the way here for this. We didn't want to yeah. tell him in person, so we're gonna <laughs> yeah. let you do it. Yeah. The exclusive. I love it. No, no, but he's with his family. Uh, moving day. I thought I'd open up by asking about the 60 million subscribers because that that number is so big. Like I, I can't even grapple with it. And I thought I'd do a little fun little experiment, highly scientific. Uh -oh. I went to the streets of Hollywood, okay. and I wanted to compare Dude Perfect versus the Beatles. So, oh, wow. Amanda, if my uh, manager and wife here could give me this video I put together. <laughs> I asked people who's more popular, the Beatles or Dude Perfect. Oh, I love the Beatles. All right. Hopefully. So, I mean, this is. I, I feel like every person's gonna answer the Beatles, but <laughs> I could be wrong. If we get it, one person, that'd be incredible. Ready? Yeah. Who are these two groups? Dude Perfect, obviously. I don't know who those people are. <laughs> <laughs> Dude Perfect. I don't know. I, I don't know. Are the Beatles? You're joking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. NSYNC. NSYNC. I'll take it. The Beatles. <laughs> Obviously the Beatles. And then Dude Perfect. Uh, yeah, Dude Perfect. I refuse to believe it. Like, I don't get the Beatles. <laughs> I think they're all hype. That's the Beatles, and I don't know. They look like some people off of True TV. <laughs> <laughs> True TV. Oh, I'm going to go. Wow. I, I mean, man, we got compared to NSYNC. I'll take, I'll take all those. All True T I'll take a True TV show. Uh, dude, honestly, I there was no, like, uh, maybe there were, and he netted yeah, them yeah, out. I was going to say, that's all in the editing base. Yeah, but. Hey, no, 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 it's it. not. It's actually. Actually, like, like I stood out there all day, asked people that like, question. Huh? Were there a lot of people that knew neither? No, no. It's actually, it's funny. The age gap, too. Like, so many younger people knew Dude Perfect over the Beatles. And I just wanted to rewind the clock. Like, take me to your days at Texas A&M. Like, when you guys met, you uploaded that first viral video. When did life start changing? Like, what was that first moment you're like, oh, my God, I, I think, like, life is changing. I can maybe, maybe do this. You know, we put out that very first video, 2009. We were all just messing around in the backyard. We had no intention of creating a brand, no intention of making a business or getting sponsored or anything like that. And so when we put it out there and to see it have success early on was like to us at the time was just nothing more than like genuine excitement. Like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like we did it. Like we made a viral video and that was like very much the extent of it at the time. We were super excited with what we put together. Like after we kind of compiled all the shots. Corey obviously was like our editor at the time, but we would have never even given that title because fancy. there was nothing to title. And uh, yeah, Good Morning America called the next day and they wanted to put it on TV. And we were like, we did it, we peaked. Like this, this congrats boys. Well done, we made a video that got on TV. That was like where we thought, okay, there was Dude Perfect. And then now we're, now we're done, now we're hanging it up. But you guys kept it going, and I know playing different roles like editing, finances, business, Gary, like I, I heard uh, you're doing that creative development, Tyler, right? Um, take me through like as you guys are going, uploading more videos in college, I feel like graduation is the moment of truth. For sure. How well was it going at that point, and how much money were you guys making? Like why did you guys decide to take jobs, and how close did you come to quitting Do Perfect? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna speak for them because they have a different story, but me, Cody, and Ty, graduated college very much with clear intentions to go out into the real world and and pursue the yeah, you know jobs. the degrees that we got we were also the only three that were married so we had a little bit more on the line yeah. than yeah actually we we just had this uh i just had this discussion with my wife um her stepdad at the time when we were dating um was alive he passed away right before we got married and i literally asked her I was like man what do you think he would think <laughs> of dude perfect now because he would have been like, I mean, he would probably drop dead after if he sees if he sees the success. Because I mean, he would always be like, yeah, I mean, it's fun, but you know, you got to focus on that real job. So good luck with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we all we had no graduation day was just a hey man, dude, perfect was fun while it lasted. It got us, you know, money to buy engagement rings and stuff like that. And uh, you know, at least for us three, these guys had clear other clear intentions of of dude perfect, but. 
Yeah, that was, uh, for, for me, it was, it was never going to be, I, to be fair, I still think we haven't, it's, it's not a real job. I'm still like, man, tomorrow I'm probably going to have to go really? work somewhere. You know, I'm always the pessimist in the group, you know, it's just like, when's this going to end? This is too good to be true. So well, why is this story different for you guys? We had a couple of moments during school where there was an actual like business opportunity that came up through it. The very first uh, time we were pitched by a company to be involved in anything was GMC. They said, hey, we saw, you know, we, we probably made four or five, six videos at the time during our junior and senior year. And they said, look, if you guys could do anything, you know, you guys have done these little shots in your backyard, like what would it be? Yeah. And so we talked about it and uh, we told them, well, we'd love to shoot a shot out of an airplane. And we were thinking they were just gonna be like, ah, okay, but like, actually, what would you want to do? And they said, great, what else? And so we put together a big list of things and um, we ended up going out to a field near Austin and Ty went up in this crop duster airplane with a basketball gun on the bottom and the only GMC heavy duty <laughs> truck that they like had made one. at the time. And so their one thing was don't break the truck when you're <laughs> dropping basketballs out. And so Ty goes up on the very first shot, circles around, drops the ball and misses the goal by three football fields and almost hit a cow oh my God. over in another field was how much closer it was to that and then drop it in the goal. So he circles back around and we're just thinking we're weighing over our heads. And on the second try, Ty drops it out of the airplane and drains it. And that was our very first experience in doing something for any type of big company. And so that ended up going on the NBA finals as a TV commercial and the World Cup. And that was our first like big commercial thing that we had been a part of. How much did and they so pay? That, that was we got paid. We got paid sixty grand, for and there were six of us. Three at the time. YouTube videos, an NBA Finals commercial, a World Cup commercial, and then I guess posting on Facebook. It, it was funny because at the time we actually thought that we won. We were like, yeah. dude, we just we had got, that same reaction, but the other side. We were like, oh my we got the gosh. sixty grand. Well, you're in college. Yeah. I mean, we were ecstatic, and obviously they gave us the ability to do something we would never have had a chance to try. Yeah. So it's, of course, it's all relative. And then that marketing team won all kinds of awards. And it had over a billion impressions in like a week. Yeah. And they were like, when we heard that, we were like, oh, the cheapest they, they paid for a commercial. <laughs> but that, I think, moments like that, and then companies that would come along after asking us to feature their brand and what we were doing, was what made us feel like, okay, maybe, yeah. because YouTube was so early, we weren't making hardly anything off of YouTube, YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was what gave us some encouragement that, okay, we must be onto something if all these companies want to tie in what they're doing somehow to yeah. the content. Yeah, but you guys still kept your jobs after that. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I heard a specific story, I was doing my research. You guys did this video, the basketball shot from a Goodyear blimp. Mm -hmm. And you got a call from your boss. Yeah. Yep. And you were still working your day job. Like, what was that phone call about? So it was, uh, it was another video that we, basically we told a brand that all we had that was a weekend to work because we were all doing our other stuff and we would just be like, yeah, you know, we're so busy with speaking engagements and stuff during the week. Yeah. It's going to have to be on a Saturday. And they're like, really? Like, uh, yeah. okay, I guess we could be out there on a oh, Saturday. Oh, they didn't realize you had day jobs. Yeah, and they had no, no, they idea. Had no idea. And oh, wow. so uh, I was like, all right, guys, we got just this weekend to, to knock this thing out. Let's do it, get paid, and then we'll be going home. And so I go out there, I try it all day, never get the shot. Because the first day we had bad weather or something, the... The ceiling was well, too also low. Well, so we started from like 500 feet. Like we started really ambitious. Yeah, we were very. like, man, we're gonna go as and high so as possible. Rebounding in a blimp is hard too because <laughs> you throw out the basketballs you have, and then there's not a quick way to bring down a blimp. They don't just like basically they float down and they get close enough, and there's a big rope that hangs down from a blimp, and these 15 guys come scurrying out of the woods, and this like literally they how they do. It. They jump up, and 15 guys pull down a blimp <laughs> like it's practice, like it's just yeah. you never see how it works. And then they load up a bunch of basketballs and send tie back day. up. It's pretty funny. So I never make the shot, and we're like, this is kind of the first time we've gotten into a situation like, okay, so this brand paid us to come out. Out here we didn't really deliver on a video so how does this work and so I went home did y'all stay out there no, we came, we came home with you. okay we, we all went home and then they had to go back because it's like good we, enough. we don't have the shot yeah oh, wow. and so then Garrett went up there and it was funny the first time he got up there <laughs> you know we have like a bag of like 20 balls in the blimp and you're usually trying to make it look like it was early on in the process. Like we never were like, yeah, we make it on the first try all the time, but you don't want like a bunch of balls landing next to the goal and seeing them in the shot. 
And so Gary gets up in the blimp and he's like, this is a good year blimp shot. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like six balls falling in the air at the same time, like slow down. <laughs> you can't have that many in the air. Incredible. And so he ended up making it. And it was the highest we were ever on Sports Center, not top two. Top two. Yeah, number, two number two on the top, on the top 10. 10. Big moment. Wow. Um, Big but moment. yeah, my boss was like, hey, um, and this, there was a few of these, but he's like, I can't have you miss. I need you out there on Saturdays at, at the office working. So six days a week. And I was like, I mean, that really kind of made the decision for us. We were like, I don't, I don't know how this is going to continue to go on doing Saturdays. Um, Sundays, we always have, have tried to protect um, just as time to go to church and spend time with families and things like that. And so it kind of made the decision for us. And at that time, I remember um, we weren't making near as much on Dude Perfect as we were at our full-time jobs, which I was making $40,000 a year at a landscaping company. But I was like, yeah, but even if we make half of that, it's like way more fun and we're enjoying it. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. And we left in April um, and then Garrett and Cody did this kind of the same thing at their, at their full-time gig. And it was really cool. We, we signed uh, our Nerf partnership, which to this date is one of our longest partners we've ever had and had an awesome uh, run with them and created lots of content and, and really cool products together. And so we felt like that was God just kind of reassuring us like, hey, this is the path that I have for you guys. I'm going to take care of you guys. Um, and it was, it, was, it was a really awesome time. Yeah. I looked at some other stats just to get uh, comparison numbers. You guys have been together for over 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I see you guys like as a boy band, a group. The Beatles only lasted... In sync, lasted apparently. In sync, in sync. <laughs> coming back. Seven years, the Beatles were together. One Direction, six years. Um, even duos like Smosh, they separated and they recently reunited. Um, Obviously, you guys are like brothers, like things come up, like uh, Garrett, you said in a documentary, uh, you had this amazing quote, quote, working with friends and family is the hardest thing I've ever done and will do. I might feel some anger towards you right now, but you know, I still love you. What's the biggest argument you guys have gotten into? <laughs> You know, honestly, it's probably of, of something like really dumb, you know, probably one of the biggest arguments we have, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I think we, we, we say it all the time. I mean, we're more brothers at this point. And so like with friends, if, if, if you have a big fight there, you never know what's going to happen. You could just continue to go, you know, with family. It's like you're kind of stuck together. You can't ever break up. So I really feel like that's kind of the, you know, well, I can be mad at you for as long as I can, but eventually I'm going to have to confront it at, yeah, at some yeah. point, you know, so. Is, is there an example? Like, I even think about, like, when you guys launched Stereotypes, that's such a different thing from Trick Shots, you know? Yeah. And now Stereotypes has over a billion views on that form. Yeah. Like, creative disagreements, like, oh, yeah. business partnerships. Yeah. Like, like what, 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 can you give us an example? Because I think what's admirable is you guys sticking together throughout it. I mean, the, 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 it, it's, it's literally across the board. Everything from financial disagreements to... Yeah. Creative. creative. I mean, I, I'm very much the only creative I care about is if you don't put my life in danger, I'm good. You know, so if they're like, hey, guys, we're jumping out of a plane. I'm like, OK, I'm putting you know, I'm going to have some input on this yeah, one. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, I would say mostly creative, probably, because that's what we do every day is, you know, so we'll get out there and Ty does the battles and we want to stay out of it. But then when we are about to film, Ty's like, all right, this is what we're doing. And we're like, yeah, right, we're not doing that. And Ty's like, you weren't in the meeting, so we're doing that. And we're like, we're not doing that. And so it's like this. Then all the production guys just kind of slowly go away, and we're left to just argue with us thus far. If you wanted to, yeah, I was going to say, if, if you want an example of some of the biggest arguments we get on, we do all these battle videos, yeah. and you're not going to find very easily five guys that are more competitive than us. Yeah. And these aren't real things. We have invented most of these battles. Yeah. And so, for example, we did a video, all sports golf battle with Zach Efron, mm. and we drug him along to one of the things we were doing. And he is, there is a point in the video, <laughs> we had to cut a lot of it out. He's basically just, he met us, you know, two hours before this. We're just hanging out on this golf course and wherever <laughs> we were. And he's just kind of standing there like this while we are essentially screaming at each other about who's putt with a mallet an with an air tail yeah went farther than something and he is literally like do these guys care that much about you know who yes, does Zach actually yeah, one yeah. stroke ahead and he started cracking up laughing because he's like man this is just like me and my brother like you guys are really that competitive and it's true yeah. but you know we we're brothers like we fight about this kind of stuff whether it's competition or whether it's stuff on the business side but you know you asked how it has worked yeah. and I think the honest answer to that is you know we we fight about stuff just like anybody does yeah. But I think the glue for us has been our faith. The fact that we're all Christians, that we, that's what we can always come back to. And I think that we have gotten better at cleaning the slate, you know, and we have gotten better. It's still hard for us. We're all, you know, prideful 
guys, but you know, we've gotten better at saying, hey man, I was wrong, like, will you forgive me? And that's hard, that's not an easy thing to do in life, but if you care about somebody and you wanna keep you know, the, uh, the friendship, and for us, our business is our friendship. You know, I mean, that's kind of the reality of what it is. People see that on camera and we wanna be in a good place with each other, and that's not easy. I was gonna say, <laughs> we all, they mentioned they got married before the two of us did. So we've all been hitting different life stages throughout the way. Corey had a famous quote early on. Don't put this in, yeah, go for it. Corey had a famous quote early on where there was some scheduling conflict where he wanted us to go ahead and do it, but these guys didn't want to. And he said, I didn't tell you guys to get married. And so then, and then I think God was very uh, aware of this joke. And so he had twins. Um, before anybody else. And my life got super hard there for a while and everyone would <laughs> laugh and look at me and say, I didn't tell you to have twins. I know, I and I was like, twins. Kai earned that. I deserved that big time. That so was coming. That's a real piece too, is of course, you know, you hit different life stages at different times and um, you know, there's always different challenges along the way. But like you said, we, <laughs> yeah, you got to find a way to, to make it right with each other. You know, another thing that blows my mind is like, when most people think of sports, they think about rowdiness, like alcohol, like people like screaming, like, you know, swear words at the screen. But you guys have made the decision to stay family friendly, trustworthy. I'm curious, what's the biggest partnership or deal that you guys said no to because it didn't align to the dude perfect values? Real quick, I want to show you what it took to pull off this interview because from the giant studio that we rented to all of the lights to the six, seven cameras on set, this is by far our biggest production yet. And it's really all thanks to subscribers like you who've helped us grow so much in the past year, as well as sponsors like Licked who believed in us from the very beginning. And if you don't already know, Licked is one of my favorite creator tools. They are pretty much the only platform that lets you use mainstream music in your YouTube videos, all while being protected from demonetization and copyright strikes. And I'm talking about huge hits like from Bruno Mars to Charlie Puth to Cardi B because if there's one thing that I've learned in my eight years working inside YouTube and Instagram before becoming a creator it's that the right music is what separates the good videos from the great ones. And with Licked, you have access to over 1 million mainstream tracks in addition to a ton of other stock music and sound effects that are so easy to search for. So if you haven't already, check out the link below in the description and make sure you sign up to get 50% off your first mainstream track and 14 days of free stock music. And now, back to the video. Um, <clears throat> I feel like today we never really get that far down the path, so I don't have like a like monetary value that we gave up because we were just like, hey, that's not gonna work for us or whatever before we ever get that far. But I mean, the very first, like, yeah, before GMC, the first brand that ever approached us was a beer company. Yeah, Budweiser or something. And I was, I was 20 years old, so I wasn't even in college. And they're like, hey, we wanna give you guys free beer as much as you want, just put them in the videos. And they're like, it's just not, like that's what everybody would expect, you know, five college guys to kind of do in their first if they were to get fame and have a video and things like that. and. Like Corey alluded to, like our faith is kind of that common thread that goes back to why we're able to continue to do this, we feel like 15 years later. And that just didn't totally align with what we wanted to be known for or um, just really what we wanted to partake in even at that time. And so uh, we turned it down and, and early on, I would say it, it did keep us from a lot of opportunities and, and we would certainly have been, you know, opened up to more brands that we would be able to work with. And I think now it's kind of crazy 15 years later, like that has been, that is the number one thing that, that especially families come up and tell us now is like, thank you for creating content that we can sit down as a family and watch and I don't have to worry about it. Or I can walk out of the room and if my you know four year old's watching it, then it's fine it's, and it's okay. And I think that's kind of bled over into the brand world too is why brands have been uh, so open and willing to align with us now is, you know, we've proven that. Um, and, you know, you brought up those timelines of those groups that were together. Like, it's, it is wild to think that we've been doing this almost 15 years. And that it's a lot of trust and content built over those years. And so we don't take that lightly. It's something that we always try and steward well. And uh, it's, it's turned out to be a real benefit to the business when originally I don't think that was necessarily the case. Yeah. Yeah, it's so easy to see trust in hindsight. Are there other examples of taking this path and not that path that allowed you to have this family-friendly brand? I mean, I just boil it down to like, we just, that's just kind of who we were. We never made the intentional yeah. decision of like, hey, we're not gonna film with alcoholic brands. It's just, we never really were into the party scene in college. So we were into just having fun, you know, like, so we just filmed us doing what we we yeah. did in the daily life. Like we. Again, nothing against alcohol. It's just not something we partook in college. And it's like, we, we like to bet each other for sandwiches. 
so that's what we did and we filmed it and so like it was never like this like genius thing of them might be like totally. you know the market that really needs to be hit right now is the <laughs> five to 15 year olds you know like that it was never it was never really like that it was just us like just kind of being who we are yeah. and so it wasn't really an intentional decision it was just like this is who we are another kind of another small but fitting example uh just kind of with us and honesty and, and trying to be you know Another example kind of along those lines, uh, when we made our very first video in our backyard with the trick shots, yeah. there was a time when Ty did a shot over his head and uh, the ball swished right in front of the net. It didn't oh. actually go in, but on camera, you would have been completely convinced it went in. Yeah. And we just made the decision as silly as it yeah. is. Like, you know what? Like, we want to always be able to look someone in the eye and say our shots are real, right? Mm -hmm. Our stunts are real. And so we redid the shot until we made it. And we kind of have always looked back at that moment anytime a similar situation happens whenever we're working hard to do a stunt. And obviously we've moved beyond trick shots and stuff now. Um, still do them, but we do a lot of things as well. But that kind of mantra for us of, yeah. you know, we're not going to settle or just do what people would expect somebody to do or, or take a shortcut. Yeah. You know, we want to do it the right yeah. way for our own sake as well. We want to, you know, be able to look in the mirror and be proud of what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the creative process, like launching new formats, like stereotypes over time you know a lot of creators get stuck in like just yeah. one thing that defines them you guys have been able to expand like how have you done that and what tips do you have for creators who are trying to figure out other formats to replicate yeah that was i feel like that was one of the number one questions that we got at the event that we had at the office the other night we had all the creators up there yeah. they were there was a lot of good questions that people were asking but around the diversity of the content was definitely a, a hot topic but i think for us it's interesting, you know, our, our, we have a production team now and one of the things that they told us recently is they, they brought like all the videos of the last year and we try and look at, you know, what performed well, like look at all the analytics and everything. And they were like, there's an inherent, like when you guys come up to us with an idea that you guys are passionate about and you love it and you have fun with it and you enjoy it, it's like every single one of those videos outperformed the average of the videos over the year. And so I think I would, I would kind of, liken that to coming up with new pieces of content to try because we've tried pieces of content that have failed intending for there to be a whole series of, of things around it but uh, the stereotypes was was one that Corey came up with and we had all played pickup basketball and that was just like a such a natural like funny comedy thing that, that opened us up to a whole new audience because it wasn't necessarily uh, just trick shots anymore. It was now like more comedy based. And then the battles and the competitions for the first time, people started latching onto our individual personalities. And they're like, I love the fact that Garrett doesn't care. That's how I am. Like, I don't, I don't care if in a game, if I, whatever it is, like whatever's happening. And so now people started to latch onto that, which opened up the overtime series, which is now almost all personality yeah. based, but it gave us a format to where now we can try different series within overtime. And if something doesn't work, then we can toss it out and never do it again. But if Wheel Unfortunate happens to be everybody's favorite thing, then we can stick it in there every single overtime as long as it goes on. It's brutal. I, I hope we cancel it. Yeah. It so far, people are still liking me. it. So I, I think Corey's uh, out of luck there. But uh, yeah, it's. I, I just try and tell people like just film things that you enjoy doing. But you, I mean, the yeah. the important thing is that is that you have to branch out and you've got to yeah. create different types of content because I can promise you if we're still doing basketball trick shots 15 years later, we're not sitting here doing this interview. Yeah, yeah. Um, it feels like Dude Perfect is becoming more than Dude Perfect in the same way that Disney is becoming more than just Walt, yeah. you know, the person who became more than just Walt Disney. That $100 million Dude Perfect world made a ton of headlines. Um, are you guys trying to create the next Disney world? Tell me about that. What's the vision behind it? I was just at Disneyland, so I want to back off of it feeling <laughs> like that. I mean, right, it is, it is, and that is truly a wild operation they got going yeah. there. I think, I think we would all say what we are trying to do is give people an opportunity to feel what they feel when they watch the videos, but yeah. actually participate, right? Mm -hmm. And so whether that eventually is the destination that yeah. we're trying to create there, or other small things along the way, like product lines we want to put out, yeah. or traveling experiences that may come. We want people to be able, either it's as a family or group of friends, to have the type of moments that they've watched us have yeah. in these videos for these last 14 years. Yeah. I think it's been cool to see, you know, on YouTube, you, your feedback is comments and analytics <laughs> and data. Mm -hmm. And then when we went out on tour for the first time, we, we, we really hadn't done a whole lot of like meet and greets. And being in Texas, like we're a little bit isolated from the, collaboration community in LA or whatever it may be. And so to go on tour and see our fans for the first time in person and through the VIP lines and see the families together yeah. 
And, you know, the organizations like Make-A-Wish, who we've been so fortunate to partner with and see those kids and just the impact that we have been able to have uh, uh, in a small part um, on them and their families was so meaningful to us to see in person. And I think the destination is just uh, a further um, evolution of that and being able to provide that for families again to come together and experience that um, and, and to be able to do it in a physical destination is kind of that next level. So. We're, we're still excited about it. It's a long, pro it's a lot longer process than I think any of us originally uh, thought it would be. Um, and it's just so much work to pull something like that off. But I think we're still all very hopeful that um, sooner rather than later, we will have that physical destination that, that people can come to and experience do perfect. You also kind of, you talk about Disney and I think what a lot of, what they've done so well is Disney means something to people, right? And what they've done such a good job of is incorporating all these different brands, obviously underneath yeah. the kind of umbrella brand. Something we're super excited about as we think, you know, do perfect in the future um, is how we can help other creators kind of, you know, yeah. come into their own. Like Tyler said, we had a bunch of people from Vid Summit at our office the other night and, um, you know, something we're really excited about, we actually haven't told anybody, I don't think I'm gonna get in trouble telling you guys this, but tomorrow we're launching uh, the Dude Perfect streaming service. Oh, yeah. And so we're super excited about that. We love YouTube, yeah. but we feel like, when, you know, people come up to us on the street all the time and say, hey, you're the only channel we let our kids watch, right? And we take that seriously. That's, you know, we're honored for that to be the case. But we've got kids ourselves. We understand that it's hard sometimes for a parent to pre-watch yeah. everything that goes in front of their kids. That's tough. And what people want is they want to look to someone and say, I trust you. And if you trust all this other stuff, then then I will trust it. And we're you know putting ourselves forward to saying, hey, we're willing to do the hard work of searching YouTube and searching these other places and finding the next great content creators. And we will put our due perfect stamp of approval on that. And so what we're doing is, you know, we're going to have all of our own content on our streaming service, just the Dude Perfect app um, available on everything. But we uh, are also going to help you know creators that we trust and that we would let our kids watch. Uh, it's it's going to be app. underneath our app. Oh, and so wow. we do perfect approved content. Wow. And, you know, we feel like we have the opportunity to be gatekeepers for all these other content creators. Obviously, it's as noisy yeah. and cluttered now in the market as it's ever been. Yeah. So we're kind of trying to help those people break through within our system as well as you know some of the other places which is really fun wow i mean my wife and i just had our uh, first baby uh, oh two congrats months ago. that's amazing and uh, i'm starting to think about that uh as she starts to it's just hard. get it's hard and uh, i saw the app and i really look at it and it's uh, really fascinating just how you guys can champion other people and yeah. the same vision and values that yeah. you guys have brought about um Take me through like the other way I feel like you guys are creating the brand beyond just yourselves is your products. And I wanted to ask about one specifically because um, a few months ago you guys put out a TikTok uh, and I think you did YouTube short a real like the one where you put ping pong balls and they landed on the peanut butter, right? Yep. Um, creamy peanut butter. Creamy peanut butter, yeah, yeah. And that was like like peanut butter tic-tac-toe. It landed and you know that was kind of where you put your X or your O. Um, and now that's uh, become a product that you're launching in Walmart. Right, it's a sticky tic tac. Like, did, did does content help you come up with product ideas? Or that one's a sore about? subject for me because I had a strong lead in that tic tac toe game uh, that went viral, and Cody came back and beat me on the last peanut butter toss. Um, but the truth is, you know, you never really know what's gonna uh, catch on with people. Yeah. Yeah. But we had, I mean, that game stayed, that toast stayed on that table for quite a while because everyone in the office kept going around playing it. Uh -huh. And we were, we were in the middle of developing some product and that one stood out to us. We were like, we need to come up with a way to do this. And so you're right, we, we're about to launch here at the end of October um, in every Walmart, we have seven new products that are gonna be at the front of the stores. And that's one of them is Sticky Tic-Tac-Toe. And it's super fun. The hero product I would say is a board game. We've always wanted to make a do perfect board game that families can play together. And I'll let Ty talk to it a little yeah. bit more, but he, he took a Home Depot box and started drawing out what the very first board game would be this last year and it's been fun kind of turning that one into a real yeah. product we uh the idea first came about like hey we're gonna we're gonna create some pro which we, obviously over the last 15 years we've thought about that and what that looks like and i think the struggle for us is always balancing that quality and availability and having something that just isn't so expensive but um, the board game was like, man, it'd be really, really cool to have something that we're proud of that, again, the kind of the goal of, of everything is that families can sit down, enjoy it together and just develop that relationship. And so I did, I cut out a Home Depot box and we started drawing out squares and spaces and started incorporating things from other games that we'd like. We had a bunch of people at the office that play all different kinds of board games. And so got their input and we'd take sticky notes and put them around and we'd play it and we'd be like, no, this space is, this is too easy. This needs to go somewhere else. And 
uh, incorporate some interactive stuff where there's trick shots that happen in the game and basically at the end you, the, you have the option the loser can spin the wheel and do a consequence. So it's a lot of fun. My boys love it and they're already over dad being Dude Perfect so they don't think that's the coolest thing anymore but they love the board game. So yeah, hopefully uh, if families like Dude Perfect then they'll definitely like the board game yeah. too. So it'll be great. And then just looking ahead, like how big is Dude Perfect right now and how many employees work there? Like how, how big is the company and how, hope, how big do you hope it'll get in the future? Like tell me about something that you guys are excited about that you haven't done yet. We've got about 25 employees right now and our team is Unbelievable. I mean, the simple fact that they can put up with us yeah, yeah. day in, day out Says is the biggest compliment to them. But I mean, we have got lifers. I mean, that's how we talk about them. They are so committed. And, you know, it takes that when you're kind of on the treadmill of yeah. content, right? Every other week is our cadence, yeah. and we've been doing videos every other week for almost 15 years. And to have people that come alongside us and help us with that is incredible. And, you know, whether it's the product or the touring or the different things we've done, you know, we've continued to hire people to help yeah. us with these different aspects and we're certainly looking you know really excitedly into the future um, we're actually right now about to uh, I guess we're six eight months away from moving but we're moving into a bigger headquarters kind of close to the one we're at but uh, building out a different uh, bigger warehouse space because we need to hire quite a few more people and so of course there's gonna be some fun <laughs> things in there it's not just gonna be uh, cubicles but yes we're very excited about you know a bunch of these projects we have coming up and we're creating some space for some more people. So if you want to work at Dude Perfect, <laughs> yeah. uh, your, your shot gonna is going to be here right coming now. up soon. Yes, yeah. we need some more people. Yeah. But guys, I know you guys don't usually do interviews. It's, it's hard to get everyone in the room. I just appreciate you taking the time. And as a new parent, I just appreciate what you guys are doing in the world of content and beyond. So thank you, guys. It's been oh, a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. All right, guys, that's a wrap on Dude Perfect. All right. Yeah.